Good morning, everybody in the room and uh, online in Facebook and Zoom and YouTube land. Uh, oh, my name is Tracy Brown, and it is around 9.15 a.m. Central Time, which means it is time for the CSL Dallas Sunday Morning Science of Mind class. And uh, if you were with us last week, you got the most amazing explanation of the creation, one of the two creation stories. How many of you were here or watched it online? On, uh, if, you were, if you're on Facebook or Zoom, put a yes in the chat or I was there. OMG, I was watching online. And um, and even though it wasn't new to me, it's just fabulous to go through that. And at the end of the class, Petra said, Dr. Petra said, you want to bring your coffee or drink some coffee before next week, because we're going to do the second creation story, which is Adam and Eve and in the garden. And she forgot that she was going to Europe for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and so yesterday she says, she sends me this message saying, I forgot I was going to be in Europe for two weeks. Could you please tell everybody who regularly attends the class that I will pick up on the creation stories when I return? <laughs> so um, I'm so glad she didn't say to me, Tracy, why don't you tell the creation story part two or number two, even though I love it too, but I don't do it as well as Dr. Petra does. So we do typically, if by chance, this is your very first time being exposed to the Sunday morning class, we typically take the science of mind textbook and we go through it sequentially. It usually takes about three, three and a half, maybe four years because we start at the beginning and go all the way through and then we rinse and repeat. Um, and where we are in the textbook right now is related to the creation story, which is how that came up last week. But today we are going to do one of those rare times where we don't stay in sequence. And that's because there are a couple of things going on this weekend that you may be having on your mind. And, and we want to talk about them from a science of mind perspective. Um, today in the U.S., we are honoring and celebrating what? No, no. Today is June 18th. Father's Day. Father's, Day. <laughs> Father's Day. Do we have any fathers in the room? Yeah, we've got a few. If you're a dad and you're on virtually, let us know. Put it in the chat. How proud you are to be a dad, a father, a pop, a granddad. And uh, and then this weekend, we also are honoring and recognizing that tomorrow is Juneteenth, which in 2022 became a federal holiday. And so we want to also talk a little bit about freedom and uh, what does science of mind teach about freedom and why is honoring the Juneteenth holiday how do we do that from that perspective? So um, Father's and Father's Day, I want to talk about in the context of several spiritual principles. One of the spiritual principles that I want to talk about is love. And Ernest Holmes defines love in this way. If you uh, have your textbook, or if you're in the room and you're near one and want to follow along, the definition in the glossary is on page 608. Love. Love is the self-givingness of the spirit through the desire of life to express itself in terms of creation. Emerson tells us that love is a synonym for God. We are also told in the New Testament 
that he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Love is free from condemnation, even as it is free from fear. Love is a cosmic force whose sweep is irresistible. Love and wisdom. So I want to I want us to spend uh, just a few minutes thinking about the role that society has given and often prescribes for dads. And when we are honoring fathers and dads in in the you know in our lives in the realm of humanity I think it's important that we stop and go, wait, what are the spiritual qualities that we value and recognize? Now, maybe you are not like me because some of my, even my friends and definitely many of my family members have used a different W word to describe their perception of me. They think I'm a little weird. And um, because whenever there is a holiday, I'm the one who's like, okay, yeah, I know, but why do we really celebrate that? And whatever we're going to do, yeah, let's have fun, let's have food, let's be with friends and family, but also let's spend a little bit of time going back to why is this really important? Why do we say it's important and how can we honor that? So when I think about fathers and, and dads, I think that we have an expectation that fathers will be love in action and wisdom, that they will represent that. So I read the definition for love and guess what? There is no definition for wisdom in the glossary. Wow. You would think I would have known that. So what I know there is a definition for is intelligence because we talk about the infinite intelligence of spirit. And uh, the intellect, not so much, and the intuition is there and involution. And guess what? There's nothing for infinite intelligence either. So that plan just went um, somewhere that I won't say. <laughs> But we, when we are talking about the spiritual principle of wisdom, I'm going to go back to there because that's really what kept coming up for me yesterday. Wisdom. How many of you, like me, grew up looking to your dad or a father figure in your life, an uncle, a teacher, someone at church, for their wisdom, their guidance? And what we teach wisdom is, is basically the application of intelligence. So when we are talking about honoring fathers today, I want you to think about how have you known father figures or people who you might be reaching out to, to say thank you or to say congratulations how are they demonstrating those two spiritual principles, love and wisdom, love and wisdom. And in a few minutes, I would be very interested in hearing some of you share. Help me. At the end, I have a page on wisdom that has a great line on four Right, there's a, a, a quote in the book about it. And, uh, oh, you don't have a microphone. So what page? 442. Page 442. 442. There are lots of quotes. Four. It's in your index. It's in your index under wisdom. Wisdom is justified of her children. It's in the it's in the chapter where Ernest Holmes is giving you the metaphysical interpretation from the teachings of Jesus. And so 
the wisdom is justified of her children. Is that the chapter you, you were looking at? I, I, I'm trying to be discreet holding my book up. <laughs> I, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I, I know this uh, section pretty well. So looking at the second to the last paragraph. I'm going to pull out the last sentence. A person may desire to fast and be wise, or they may desire to feast and still be wise. Virtue is independent of any material from of any material form which it may take. The children of wisdom look to the inner and not to the outer for justification. Wisdom knows neither publican nor sinner, but is conscious only of herself, though she may dress in many garments. And that's the that's the quote that gets used. I read the little before that to give you some context, because if we're going to talk about wisdom and think about it related to how we observe and pick up on the wisdom of people who are our fathers are in father roles. It's really important to get that piece that wisdom is inside out. It's a sharing of how the infinite intelligence has processed whatever is going on. And there is an inner knowing that is guided by spiritual principle that then, as the last sentence says, it knows neither publican nor sinner. In other words, no matter what the human label is, right, whether it's secular or religious, whether it's political or personal, whether at publican or sinner, it doesn't matter. Whether it's someone who is who has got a title of minister or someone who has no title at all. It does not matter. Wisdom is not limited in that way. Wisdom is conscious only of herself, though she may dress in many garments. So wisdom is that opportunity that we have or that we're looking for when we're thinking about our fathers, or our father figures. Be thinking about how did they show you wisdom or what did you get that was wisdom from your dad or a figure who was a, a father figure in your life? Love and wisdom. Those are some of the examples that I want you to think about because I want to hear from you how you saw that. And one more thing before we go to freedom. The other reason I want to do this and take just a little time of how do we apply what we teach to the everyday things that are going on, like celebrating Father's Day, is a lot of times people take their spiritual principles and they like, they're like, oh, yeah, I went to CSL Dallas this morning and I heard, went to a class and I heard a good talk. Now let me go back to my regular life. And those of you who know me or have observed me over the last few years know that for me, the most important thing is that you integrate the spiritual principles and the things that we teach <clears throat> into everything you do. And so there is no separation between the philosophy of science of mind and the way of life. So we are center, we are a, a center for spiritual living, not just a center for spiritual thinking. So June, so think of your examples, and then I'm going to add just a little bit about freedom since Juneteenth is tomorrow. And just in case um, you're not familiar with Juneteenth, Juneteenth basically is a combined combination of June 19th, Juneteenth in 1865 is the day that um, the federal government, Governor 
uh, Granger, but the federal government announced in Texas or came to Texas to enforce the Emancipation Proclamation, which had been written in 1863 and approved, uh, but had not been announced or implemented in Texas. And so, um, so that happened on June 19th, 1865. And it's also sometimes called Emancipation Day, um, and now, again, it is recognized nationally as a day that marks a day of freedom or a recommitment to freedom. If you have been thinking about Juneteenth as, oh, that's something that's like a holiday for Black people because the slaves were freed. No. Uh, yes and no. It is great to recognize that there were people who were enslaved. And they were told officially that they could no longer be enslaved. But enslavement and freedom are not necessarily the same thing. So from a spiritual perspective, if we're going to talk about freedom, here's what Ernest Holmes says to define freedom. Real freedom, this is on page 595 if you are looking in your textbook. Real freedom means that man or humanity is created in the image of perfection and left alone and allowed to make the discovery for themselves. Freedom of will means the ability to do, say, and think as one wishes, to express life as one personally desires. Quote from the Bible, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Jesus taught, the understanding of truth, infinite principle, is the emancipator. We are bound by our very freedom. Our free will binds us. The universe, being deductive only, cannot refuse us anything. The very force that makes us sick can heal us. As man realizes his oneness with creative mind, he is released from the bondage of false thinking. She sees too that freedom means liberty, but not license. So Ernest Holmes gives us two or three different ways to frame freedom. But the very first sentence, real freedom means that humanity is created in the image of perfection, then let alone and allowed to make that discovery. So I invite you to think about freedom and Juneteenth in this way. Yes, it is a day to celebrate, to honor, to recognize that um, a visible, tangible move was made to live the values that had been established for this nation. Yes. Two, yes, I encourage you to recognize and honor that there were people who were enslaved who now were no longer legally allowed to continue to be enslaved. And three, not but, and three. As someone who is grounded in spiritual principle, as someone who believes what Ernest Holmes wrote, that real freedom means that humanity is created in the image of perfection, then let alone and allowed to make the discovery. I want you to think about with Juneteenth, this was a visible and marked example of white people as well as black people and American Indian, Native American, brown people, for all people to say, oh, I am recognizing and discovering that freedom is a natural inherent for all people 
state of being. If you've been thinking about freedom as power over, or like in reality, from a spiritual perspective, no group of people can give someone else freedom from a spiritual perspective. And if you do know anything about people who were enslaved, many people who were enslaved knew that. There were limitations, but they would not have survived if they really thought they were not free to express, free to create families, free to create customs, free to do the best they could in the situation they found themselves in, just like us today, race or our sexual orientation or religion or age, any kind of place where we see limitation and we say or use the word freedom, we're not really talking about spiritual freedom. We're talking about political freedom. We're talking about human standards. I want you to, as you consider Juneteenth today and tomorrow, to challenge yourself to also go that extra step to the spiritual meaning of freedom and look for how it is showing up or represented by Juneteenth. Does that make any sense at all? I mean, maybe it's just my imagination, <laughs> but I think we need to include freedom, love, and wisdom as we think about Father's Day and as we think about Juneteenth. So I've talked about what Ernest Holmes says, what we teach in Science of Mind, and now I really want to hear your examples of how with your father or father figures, you saw love and wisdom demonstrated. And as you consider Juneteenth, how are you thinking about the spiritual depth of the meaning of freedom? So, Ryan, in case we have some new people, let's have some guidance, please. Absolutely. And good morning, Dr. Tracy. So great to have you here with us today. And welcome to everybody here in the room. And for all those folks who are joining us online via Zoom and Facebook all over the globe, we love and appreciate you tuning in with us in community today. And as uh, Dr. Tracy was saying, uh, this is an interactive discussion, and we appreciate your comments, questions. And so just as some housekeeping rules, there's a couple ways to do that. For those folks in the room who have had their coffee today, <laughs> slowly raise your hand, because I know sometimes you just want to jolt it up, right? But um, yes, just raise your hand, and we'll bring the microphone with the iconic Richard. I always have to announce iconic Richard over here. Um, and so those who are here online via Zoom, and I see we have a couple of hands raised. So great. I can see that you know how to do this. But for those who are joining us, you want to hit the raise your hand icon located down below. And I can call you into the room. And or you can also pick questions and comments inside of the chat as well. And that goes true for those folks who are watching us on Facebook Live. We love to hear from you as well. So feel free to pitch your questions or comments inside of the chat, and I can uh, bring that into the room as well. And I always like to mention for those uh, questions, comments, things like that, that do come through the chat, I tend to keep those anonymous. So that way we can continue to have a safe container of spiritual growth. Um, so it looks like we have some folks here online. So as everybody here in the room is pontificating, I'll go to Anita first. How about we do that? Anita, do you want to go ahead and unmute yourself and join the conversation? Hey, thanks, Ryan. Good morning, everybody. So, so Tracy, when uh, when you talked about fathers being love and action, and then wisdom. So, what what I know about my dad, and he's been gone hmm, twenty five years now, but his love and action was teaching me how to do things whether it was um, changing the oil on the car, changing the tire on the car, how to paint a wall in the house. But, you know, a few years back, I guess maybe oh, 10 or 15 years ago, I was building a fence 
in my backyard. And I got to this angle. And, and I was like, how do I do that? How do I uh, turn this angle? Cause it's not a right angle. It was, you know, like maybe a 45, right? And I'm like, how do I join this together? And, you know, I, I, in myself, I didn't know. And I'm like, you know, if dad was here, he would know. And so I stood back and just looked at that for a few minutes and kind of got quiet and listened. And I could hear my father's voice. And, and the idea of how to accomplish what I needed came to me. Mm. The, the infinite intelligence and wisdom that flowed through my father, even in the ethers. Yeah. And, you know, from, a, from a, a freedom perspective and, you know, as a, as a gay woman, it, freedom for me is to, is to live authentically who I am in spite of what the political landscape is doing. So, um, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I love that you repeated the phrase love in action, because if I were to tell you stories about my growing up, I, I would be telling you stories that my biological dad, I didn't think he loved me, that he didn't show love. But of course, then as I got older and realized all the things that were his way of demonstrating his love, then I got a whole new appreciation of love comes and shows up in lots of different ways. And, uh, um, you know, and, and I'm really very always aware that sometimes it's not the biological father, which is why I keep saying your dad, your father, or a father figure, because some of us have had trauma, traumatic experiences with biological parents, or we didn't even know our biological parents, but we may have had a father figure. So thanks, Anita, for sharing that. Ryan, in the room or online? Well, yeah, it looks like we have somebody here in the room. Uh, uh, the iconic, there you go. The we're, amazing, we're having a little fight here over right, the microphone the, between the iconic it's vicious. And the amazing Carmen. I know you guys can't see the combat behind the screen, but there is some. All right. Please just say your name and go ahead with your. Yep, say your name, uh, Jerry. And my comment is, um, I remember when I took foundations about four years ago, I was thinking. Um, let's say if somebody was born enslaved, right? And. I always wondered, well, how would they even appreciate or want? I mean, not want, but how would they even appreciate or could envision freedom? So I just uh, started realizing, oh, that must be one of the qualities that are inborn in humans, that everybody has certain qualities or consciousness, and that's just one of them. Yeah, so freedom from a spiritual perspective, right? We are, as Ernest Holmes reminds us, uh, it's knowing that I've been created in the image of perfection. However, I've been birthed into this physical form and I have to find it out for myself <laughs> along the way. But that's there. And so um, if that did not exist, personal story growing up, I am so grateful that I was raised and groomed by a lot, had a lot of people in my life who said, you should never be embarrassed about the fact that your ancestors were slaves. They didn't choose to be slaves. The people who made them slaves maybe won't be so proud, but you don't have any reason to be ashamed of having ancestors who were enslaved and never forget that before they were enslaved, they were leaders and teachers and kings and you know, in the, their communities, that civilizations in Africa, there's so much to go back to. So it's like, oh, so even though you could have everything stripped away from you that you knew or your ancestors knew that was good, 
and then be taken to another country that that infinite intelligence, that love, the freedom, like, oh, you can change my name, but you are not going to disconnect me from my spiritual creator. I will do what you say, but I'm still expressing freedom where I can, when I can. It's like, so I grew up being groomed to actually understand that spiritual piece um, and being able to separate, oh, that's the true innate nature of humanity, all humanity. That is the innate nature. And all the stuff we do in our politics and in our social societies that puts these people in boxes and limits them based on, I think this is the way it should be. It's like, oh, that's the game that we're all here playing. That's the dance that we're dancing. And our work, what we teach in Science of Mind is, how do we know the spiritual principles and how do we live them in our lives? regardless of the circumstances. Ah, oh, <laughs> she's pointing at me. Sorry, I just. Uh, yeah, so I have Connie here. Uh, Connie, would you like to go ahead and unmute yourself and join the conversation? Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi, Dr. Tracy. Good to see you. Um, wow, what a question. My father was a very, very wonderful father. Uh, my mother too was a wonderful mother uh, because in San Francisco, where I was born and raised, they took me to all the kids stuff and they made sure that I had a good background. The museums, the massage parlors, the uh, movies, everything. And I knew from what they were doing and how they were raising me that I was going to go to college and I was going to, you know, make a good life. However, my father sexually abused me at one point early on. And from that, what I gained was, uh, I got to forgive him. I got to find a way to forgive. Yeah. So um, that, after I started doing, oh, I pushed it all into my subconscious, okay, all that stuff, because it was just too difficult to deal with. But I started doing transcendental meditation in 1950. And at that time, wait a minute, I was born in 43. <laughs> um, no, I didn't start doing it in 1950 anyway. Ah, 1970, 1970. And at that point, about a week later, a lot of what was in my subconscious mind became conscious. Mm -hmm. right. So I was aware of what happened and then I could deal with it, you know? And then um, I understood that one of my purposes for being here on the planet was to forgive and um uh but that background that i had in san francisco growing up where they really took me to all these different places for kids um was absolutely fantastic so he was a good father uh except for that one point but that one point i turned it into a learning experience and uh, because I had conscious access to it fortunately <laughs> and okay. um, so well Connie I think one of the things that many of us if not all of us both virtually and in the room can relate to is that we can look at our parents and parent figures in our lives and we can say Here's here's some things they did that were really good or that, you know, had a good influence. And here were some things that I'm glad they did it because they taught me how I don't want to be. Right. Or I I applied what Dr. Petra talked about. 
was it just last week or was it two weeks ago, the stages of consciousness on Sunday morning? Um, and uh, we always are able to move from being a victim and thinking this happened to me and here are all the reasons that I can be angry, resentful, afraid, et cetera, and taking some responsibility for how I want to how I want to integrate that into my life by deciding what can be done by me and what can be done through me. So if if that doesn't make sense to anyone who, uh, then I just encourage you to go on YouTube and uh, look for Dr. Petra's talk on the stages of consciousness. It's a brilliant talk. Um, and it was last week. It just seems like it was a, two or three weeks ago, but it was just last week. Hey, we have time for maybe two more people. Anybody in the room want to give an example or share how this is sitting with you? What are you thinking about? Or do we want to go back online? Do we have anybody else online? Yeah. Uh, Brenda, would you like to go ahead and unmute yourself and join us? Good morning, Dr. Tracy and community. Apron. Wow. How to interweave a lot of disjointed stuff into a assessment of masculine presence in my life. So I'm going to jump off where Connie started and I'm going to work on a different expression of the story some of you have heard. Let me start by thanking my father for his co-creative act in the gift of my life. I also thank him for teaching me the drive of intelligence, the passion of healing, uh, the wonder of the national parks and of nature. That being said, my intelligence and wisdom actually came to me through my mother. What my father taught me was being driven by duty, obligation, not living your own truth, turning all of your energy and love and intelligence and outpouring outward, but not to family and not to self. And coming from a very negative background, what he ultimately taught me is if you can't face the consequences of one's choices and behaviors cumulative through a lifetime, that the choice is to transition earlier than spirit body might have otherwise. And those experiences catapulted me. First off, um, uh, the other thing it taught was a distrust of men. So those experiences catapulted me um, throughout my life by the love of two teachers at Instrumental Times who in masculine inner strength taught me presence and compassion and understanding and acceptance and borrowed strength from those and from the drive of the cultural imprint for life because my ancestors too had been enslaved and killed. Um, and uh, so what science of mind has brought to me is better ownership of my drive for life, my expression of joy and vitality and wholeness and health and well-being and connection, irrespective of the situations and circumstances of the non-present past, the fear indoctrinated future, and the joy of the now. And so 
in honor of all the negative lessons that my father taught and the love and presence and rehealing and learning to trust men and being blessed with the most awesome, loving, supportive, incredible husband. Um, I am learning for myself the lesson that he could not face. And that's the turning of love and healing and compassion and givingness inward. And that coupled with the wisdom of life will emergently evolve. And so it is. And so it is beautiful. Thank you, Brenda. So one of the things that's really, really critical and uh, Richard, could you get the microphone to Sheila, please? On the back row over here. Um, one of the things, so there are a couple of things I wanna say really quickly and then we'll close out with one final comment. One is our lessons are our lessons to learn, right? Our lessons are our lessons to learn for our own development. So what I wanna encourage you to do as you honor fathers and father figures is look for how from their own perspective they were demonstrating what they understood to be love in action and or wisdom, because we're the ones who then put the judgment on it. Was it good? Was it negative? Was it positive? Was it helpful? Was it not? And they were in most cases just doing the best that they can. So the understanding of the spiritual aspect of uh, wisdom, the spiritual aspect of love, and the spiritual aspect of freedom. That's what the invitation is. Are we able to go beyond the circumstance? And I love, Brenda, your example of in my own life, I am learning to apply science of mind to take ownership of my responsibility to describe, define, and direct my life, knowing that all of the influences I have been exposed to, whether they were an individual person or the collective society, how do I make that serve me? And uh, say your name for people who don't know you. Good morning, community. This is Sheila. Gosh, Father's Day, I haven't celebrated in so many years, but I can't say that anything was coming to me until I had a revelation about 30 years ago. My father's been gone since 85, and it was not a positive experience, but I learned a lot. However, 30 years ago, I was on a, a journey of self-exploration, and as a result of a lot of that inner turmoil and pain and growth and positive experience that came forth, I wrote poetry. And I've got one in particular, and it was actually a dream, and I wrote it down. And I was wandering along the side of a road and there was a male figure there and I was clearly lost in my dream. And this figure opened up his chest and I climbed in and it was the most incredible experience I think I've ever, one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had. And so I want to end it with wisdom is actually in me through me, as me, and I, he resides in my mind, and I in his heart. And that was the last part of that poem that I wrote. And I'll just always cherish that dream in that poem. <laughs> so Father's Day, I got a little bit of that inside my own self. Thank you. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so if you are in the room, and actually, if you're virtual as well, if this conversation and this invitation to, to go beneath the society cultural level and go to the deep, deep spiritual level, if that's bringing up stuff for you, then I just want to remind you that at the end of the celebration service, please go sit with a practitioner and invite them to pray for peace or clarity or whatever that will ground you and let you go through the rest of the day in a great way. And if you're online, 
then remember that our practitioners, our, our licensed practitioners and spiritual coaches are available for prayer via Zoom as well from 1130 to 1215 Central Time. Because if you're like me, I know some holidays, there's stuff. And a lot of times we just push it aside because we don't want to deal with it. We pretend, and I may have just been a catalyst for some of that to surface. Or maybe you have some insight that you really want to celebrate because it came to you as a result of this conversation. And our practitioners and spiritual coaches would be glad to anchor that in prayer for you as well. If you are here, our time is about up, but if you're physically here, please don't forget to take 10 minutes and look at the art of our artist of the month, Valerie Guignon, and uh, maybe you'll find something that you have to buy for your home. Any announcements, Ryan, before we close? No, just go to CSLDallas.org if you'd like to learn more about our organization and any of the upcoming classes and events. We, we have a whole ton of them and check the comments. I've posted quite a few of them. In there. Lots of events coming up in the next few weeks and lots of classes coming up late summer and into the fall. So thanks for being here every Sunday morning, 9.15 a.m. Central Time, Science Mind Class with Dr. Petra and sometimes Dr. Tracy. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have a good week.